It's Sam Taylor Johnson and Marisa Abela. <laughs> Um, so, congratulations yeah. uh, on the new film. Now, Marisa, you're playing Amy Winehouse. Yeah, yeah. Sam, you're directing. Uh, and I've got to say, you, it's a, an amazing performance. Thank you. It's an incredible mm. performance and a very, I would have thought, quite an overwhelming challenge to take on uh, playing someone who we feel we sort of know and we're so familiar with. Yeah. Um, it must have been quite daunting. It was. It was definitely nerve-wracking. I mean, you know, I think... Uh, I, you kind of have to take that fear and, and use it as a, as a kind of driving factor in, in your preparation. I mean, there's obviously... You have to do a lot of work to make her physically recognisable as the person that everyone knows as Amy Winehouse. But then there's the other side, you know, the, the person, the human, the woman behind the music and also, like, what we think we know of her. And I think that was the thing that I knew would turn this from being a, any kind of an impersonation that I really didn't want it to feel like and to, you know... Well, you must have... I'm sure you, you must have auditioned a lot of actors to play the role. Mm. Uh, yeah. And so what was it about Marisa that made you think this is the one? I had all, all these young women sort of sitting outside, coming in, and most of them had come in in some shape or form with either a hoop earring or a... Um, a cat eye or something, and Marisa had none of that. She just came in as herself, and I was just sort of, you know, fiddling around with the camera, chatting with the casting director, Nina, and, and I just looked in the lens, and, and Marisa looked up, and she had completely transformed. So she hadn't even said anything, and I thought, that's her. Wow. And it was just a shift. It was something that's indescribable, but just a shift in her DNA where I just thought, if she can do that at this point before we've even started work, then... She's going to be pretty good. But what's good about film as well is it's also it's a funny film. Yeah. yeah. And it's a light film at times. You know, it's not a downer. I mean, obviously, it's a very sad story, yeah. but it is actually kind of enervating as well. Yeah. And the performance is amazing. I'm going to show you now. We're going to show you the trailer from it uh, and, and watch it and listen to it, and then I'm going to talk to Maurice for a bit about this afterwards. This is Back to Black. <laughs> wow. <laughs> amazing film. It's also out on the 12th of April, same day as Civil War. But what I want to speak to Marisa about there is that is Marisa singing. Whoa! That's, that's crazy! Oh my I mean, gosh! Yeah. I was gonna ask you. I was like, there's no way that's Amy Winehouse's voice. Yeah. That's insane. Mm. Thank you so much. Wow. Uh, but did you go in knowing that you could sing like Amy or no, not at all. I actually don't even think anyone really asked me <laughs> during the audition <laughs> process if I could sing. I mean, you know. The final round was in Abbey Road Studios, so by that point, you know, I think people were sort of start trying to suss it out, but it wasn't <laughs> a prerequisite when I booked the job. It was more kind of... I knew that Sam and I felt the same way, is that whoever was going to play this part needed to be Amy from the inside out, and that was the most important thing. So I just trained really hard, you know. I sort of trained for two hours a day for four months with my teacher, Anne-Marie Speed, and, yeah... But you've done things for films. You've learned talents from... Didn't you learn to play piano for Power of the Dog? Yeah, I learned two songs, but they cut one of them out. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I just learned the parts that I had to learn, but it was, like, over and over and over again every night, because I don't play the piano, and it was yeah. just, like, my whole... I felt... I was just apologised to my family. I'm like, here I go again, <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, it drove me nuts, and I stopped playing after the movie. But, you know, one of the things which I think really makes the film, and will make it have a real life which will endure become a classic is a cameo appearance. Oh. Are you? you have, uh, there is a moment no. in it. Yeah, I'm actually in the film, OK? But it's not me. That, well, it is me. It is but you. They, yeah, but I, I didn't act for it. Um, it was a clip. I think I, I, I think Amy's television interview, the first interview she ever did was on my show. Yeah. Wow. And I interviewed very early in her career because I'd heard her and I thought, well, she's amazing, I'd love yeah. to have her mm. on. And there she is. And it was a very... It was a very different Amy. It was a very mm. young Amy. Um, <clears throat> uh, and you, you asked the people asked whether they could use the clip. But when I mm. watched the film, and I was slightly dreading it, thinking, "Oh my God, you know, is it going to look awful?" But, but they switched. You switched Amy mm. for Moisa in it. Yeah. I've got no idea how you did that. But it's amazing <laughs> because I remember interviewing mm. Amy, and then I see myself interviewing you as Amy. But mm. were, were you ever tempted? Because did you think about having an actor play me instead of using the actual footage? I wanted to use you and the actual footage, but then the guy that came in was actually really good, and I did consider... 
<laughs> was there someone there for you to act against? Yeah, it was, was a Jonathan Ross impersonator. Okay. Well, so <laughs> a lot of call for that, isn't there? <laughs> well, Sam sent some pictures. Prepare yourself. <laughs> it's quite a shock. Have a look at this. That looks like some oh. weird AI thing. <laughs> <laughs> Marisa, um, yes. to what extent did Amy stay with you then? To what extent did playing her sort of like linger? I like to sort of keep the lines quite clear. So <clears throat> I do a thing where I like to use, I mean, it's, I think everyone, a lot of people do it, but I like to use perfumes because it's a sensory thing that makes me feel like you know, I, I know my smell and my detergent and my perfume. So when I'm playing someone else, I like to use a different smell. And yeah, I, I had an, an Amy perfume and, and then I'd get home and wash it off. I've done that before. At, Susan Sarandon does that right. for, for roles. Like I remember working with her on Little Women and she smelled like roses all the time. Yeah. Which is so comforting and motherly. So I, I get that. Yeah, yeah, it changes the way other people interact with you too, you yeah. know, how you smell. So uh, no, it's I useful. Kept thinking, God, why is she wearing that strip? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but that, that's my thing. I know there's something you do in your work, which is not related, but it's not similar. You do, uh, you sort of use your dreams, mm -hmm. don't you? How do, how do you use your dreams to help your acting? In a way, it's like you, you, you write, what I do is I, I write what I need to know about the character or what I want to know about the character. And then whatever I dream that night, I then analyze with this woman who's more, I, can't, I don't like to call her an acting coach because she's not an acting coach. She's like an acting genie or something. <laughs> so, but like I'll... for like, okay, I'll give you an example. That's a very, this was a great dream for me. It was for Fargo season two. I dreamt about a Scooby-Doo Scooby -Doo VHS in my dream. And I'm talking with my acting lady, Greta, and she's like, well, what does it make you think of? And I was like, the way they walk, because they scurry around always, you know? And she's mm -hmm. like, there's your walk for Peggy. Wow. Brilliant. So it's, oh, it, but it comes from your unconscious mind, so you feel so much more grounded in who you're playing. And it makes you more fearless as an actor, I, I've experienced. So, and, and have you used this more than once? Is this I've of... been doing this since I was 27, is wow. when I started working with her. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Sam, you have yeah. directed your husband, I haven't have. you? Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson, uh, amazing young actor, um, who I've been a fan of for many years. What, what were the films that you had him in? It was Nowhere Boy was the first one. Wasn't Nowhere it? Boy and a Million Little Pieces. And how is it directing your husband? Um, it's really interesting. It's really, I mean, when I directed Nowhere Boy, he wasn't my husband. When I directed A Million Little Pieces, as you can see here, he was. That's me looking at him very, uh, are you going to get up out that chair or...? <laughs> 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 um, and does, is he one of those actors, because he seems, from some of the roles mm. I've seen, especially as his career progressed, he seems to be getting more and more intense on screen. Yeah. Uh, is he kind of method? Does he bring the characters home? He gets very intense and um, it's quite interesting depending on what character he's playing. Nocturnal Animals, for example, was pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, you know, he was not washing, his nails were really long. Wow. <laughs> he wanted to be toxic from the inside in order to play such an... I mean, character. there is that quote that Laurence Olivier said to Dustin Hoffman when he was try doing acting. it, where he just said, just try acting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, um, there was one morning where he woke up, he thought the bed was on fire, but we were actually saging him. And oh, <laughs> my. <laughs> wow. 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 I have Trying to purify so, your yeah. husband. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was, yeah, that was an interesting one. But, you know, it might not be so bad bringing the character home if the rumours are true. <laughs> oh, you mean is... that I might direct a Bond film as a first <laughs> woman director? Well, that would <laughs> be amazing. <laughs> but also uh, that he might be James Bond. Not for me. I mean, I... Uh... Hold it, you don't think he... Carry on speculating. You don't, you're saying he wouldn't be a good James Bond? <laughs> He'd be great. <laughs>